It turns out in finding your soulmate, you might lose some of your self-esteem. Male users of the popular dating app Tinder appear to have lower levels of self-esteem and all users appear to have more negative perception of body image than people who don't use the app at all. Well, that's according to research from the University of North Texas. They questioned a group of men and women about their body image and self-esteem at the very end of the questionnaire. People were asked if they use Tinder. And while a larger percentage of women said that they do use the dating app, it turns out that men who were actively involved with Tinder reported significantly lower levels of self-esteem than female users. And then, then men who actually didn't use the app. Well, joining us now to talk about the psychological effects of being on the app, an app like Tinder, is psychotherapist Lisa Palmer. Okay, Lisa, this is incredibly fascinating, but I've got to say, the result of all was that men, not women, who used Tinder had the lowest self-esteem. So why do you think it is that men suffered more lower self-esteem than women did? Everybody's being affected by low self-esteem when they're using um, apps like Tinder because of the rejection issue. I mean, thinking about it, you know, you're going on Tinder, you're hoping to find the man of your dreams or the woman of your dreams, and you're getting rejected, rejected, rejected. And that is bringing up a lot of negativity for people, negative core belief systems, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, I'm not smart enough, there's something wrong with me. So I definitely think that when you're using Tinder or you're using um, an online app to try to get on dates, you're kind of making yourself prone to that, that negative experience. But, but Dr. Palmer, there is that interesting result for men in particular. Uh, they had lower self-esteem than the women who were also on Tinder. And it makes me wonder whether there's an element mm. of poetic justice here. Uh, women in general would probably describe themselves as judged more superficially out there in the world than men. And now we have men on a dating app where they are literally one dimensional and there's a picture of them. Mm. And they feel pretty bad about the experience and about themselves afterwards. Are they getting a little taste of what it's like to be a woman walking the street of anywhere every day? Probably, probably because women have an opportunity to actually reject them and usually men are the ones chasing the women. So it's like being on Tinder sort of puts you on an equal playing field uh, as you know the gender is equal to each other. So maybe that's what it has to do with. And in full disclosure, Tony and I were part of the dating scene before the era of Tinder. Uh, yeah, we, uh, I'm an yeah. unfrozen caveman uh, who's come to life, <laughs> and all of these apps exist, and I, I'm not aware of how to use any of them. And, but I do have a question about them, and this is an important yeah. one, I think. Like, they are relatively new, new enough that I didn't use a single one. Over the long term, are relationships born of technological matching as durable as ones that are not? I've actually known a couple of people that have gotten married after they met somebody on an app like I don't um, doubt that. I don't doubt Tinder that marriages or yeah, but I don't see it happening very often. I think it's just too easy to find somebody else and go on to the next person and there's just not like a whole lot of work involved. So, I would say no. I mean, that anecdotally that would make complete sense to me. We yeah. know that, you know, when it comes to social movements, for example, I've covered a lot of protests. It's easy to like a protest page. It's a lot harder to go out there in the real world to show up. Right. Uh, and then the people like who have do... a real relationship. Exactly. And there's less risk yeah. involved. It's easy to retweet something, say you like it. It's easy to, to swipe right, uh, <laughs> if that's even the right direction. Yeah. I don't even know. Um, <laughs> but Lisa, you, you make a good point. You say that you, you actually, the advice you give to your patients is get off all online dating apps. Why? I'm sorry, can you say that again? I, I was told that the I advice you give you. to your patients usually is get off all the online dating sites. I'm curious why you would say that. Yeah, because from my experience with patients, I see them being disappointed a lot and I see it don't, it doesn't work out for them. So it's pretty much a game of numbers. So you have to be going into it knowing that you're probably going to deal with a lot of rejection and disappointment. And if you're already kind of dealing with a lot of your own psychological issues of rejection and abandonment and maybe core negative belief systems, and you're just actually making yourself more prone to, to that rejection. So I would say nine times out of 10, uh, that probably doesn't really work out, so you probably want to avoid it. Okay, nothing wrong with the old-fashioned yeah. way. As someone in a newsroom <laughs> the told me, they, they've d they deleted all the apps on their phones for dating, and they're just doing the old-fashioned way, like that. Psychotherapist Lisa Palmer joining us. Thank you very much, Lisa.